Hi boys and girls, today we're going to work on identifying types of angles and measuring them using a full circle protractor. So this is going to be a little bit of a preview to tomorrow's class where we'll use full circle protractors and it will be hands on. Alright, so let's get started. Let's do a little bit of review. Remember, an angle is made up of two rays, so here's one of the rays, here's another one of the rays. The vertex of an angle is where the two endpoints of the rays meet, so the vertex would be right here. All right, and if you remember, we've been doing lots of practice with these angles. So we have a cute angle, a cute little baby angle. It's an angle that's under 90 degrees. We have an obtuse angle or an obese angle, an angle that is from over 90 degrees to under 180 degrees. We have a right angle, which is a 90 degree angle. We have a straight angle, which is 180 degrees, and as you know, that's a line. And then we have a reflex angle, which is the big part of the angle here. Okay, all right, so acute angle, a cute little baby angle. It's less than 90 degrees. Obtuse angle, an obese angle, an angle that is any that is above 90 degrees but less than 180 degrees. A right angle, 90 degrees. Straight angle, 180 degrees. And a reflex angle, which is going to be bigger than 180 degrees. Okay, it's this big part of the angle here. All right, so let's get into some practice. Today in class, you learned that there are 360 degrees in a circle, and we related that to the clock. So here's a circle protractor, okay? This is similar to what you used in class today. You designed this on the face of a clock, if you remember. So here are the steps to using this full circle protractor. First of all, it's like a ballpark. You want to identify the type of angle you're measuring, and that way you'll have an idea of where your answer is going to land. Okay. Then you want to place the vertex of the angle. Remember, the vertex is where the two rays meet at the center of your protractor. Here's the center point of the protractor. Okay, and place one of the rays pointing to a zero. Okay, now this one, this protractor here says zero slash 360, this is the zero mark right here, okay? And then we're going to find the number the other ray points to, and then we're going to check our work. And this is where identifying the type of angle you're measuring is really important. If you identified your angle as an acute angle, you want to make sure your measurement is under 90 degrees. Otherwise, there's a mistake either where you identified or how you measured. So let's get started. Let's practice these steps. First of all, what kind of angle is this? What kind of angle are we talking about here? If you say obtuse, you're correct. So just like a ballpark, I might write this off to the side so I remember. I'm just going to write obtuse up here. Hmm. So that I remember, and you can write it in the margin of your paper or on the line when you're working. Okay. And then place the vertex of the angle at the center of the protractor. All right. Well, I can do that. You're going to slide your protractor over. Okay. And see that point on the protractor? That's the center point. I want to line that up with my vertex. Okay, that part's done. Now I want to take and place the one of the rays pointing to zero. So I want to take and I'm going to slide my protractor, being careful not to unalign my vertex from the center. I'm going to line it up with zero. So notice that I have my protractor. It's in the center point, is lined up with my vertex. One ray is lined up with my zero. Okay, and then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to look and see what degree my other ray is pointing to. Well, gee, well, I have 100 here and 110 here, and then there's a mark in the middle. So if you think, what's between 100 and 110? 105. And then, well, there seems to be one there, so that would be 104, so 103. So it's 103 degrees. So let me write this down, 103 degrees. Now you can use the degree sign, which is a little circle, or you can write the word degrees either way. 
All right, so let's check our answer. Now that we've identified our angle as obtuse, so we measured it, and we got 103 degrees. Hmm, well, I know an obtuse angle is anything over 90 and under 180. So check our answer in our ballpark or our estimate of what type of angle it is are both, in, both the same, so it works. All right, let's try another angle here. So let's say we have this angle down here. Let's go through the process. First of all, what kind of angle are we talking about? If we're talking about this little angle here, well, we know it's an acute angle. So I'm just gonna grab a pen here and I'm just gonna write this over to the side because I wanna remember this. Acute. Okay, now I wanna take my protractor and I'm gonna line it up with my vertex. Okay, and then I'm going to slide my protractor so that it's point, so one ray is pointing to zero. Okay, and then I'm going to look my other way, and what do I see? Hmm, it's pointing to 300, 320, 320 degrees? Okay, this is where it comes in really handy to have identified what type of angle because if you look you know a cute angle is a cute little baby angle and it's under 90 degrees so could 320 be the answer no of course not and if you remember the full circle is 360 degrees so what you just what we just measured was actually the reflex angle okay we actually measured the degrees of this big part of the angle here so the big part of the angle here is 320 degrees now you kind of know something don't you you know that there's 360 in a full circle so 360 minus 320 would give you 40 degrees here. So you can figure out that this angle is 40 degrees. Or we could go like this. We could slide our protractor over and line up the zero on the other ray. And then here we go. If we look straight over, what do we have? We have a 40 degree angle and that would be an acute angle because you know an acute angle is a cute little baby angle okay all right friends we're going to practice we are going to do a lot more practice i'm going to give you your own circle protractor tomorrow and i'm also going to review with you how to use a circle protractor in class and then i'm going to teach you how to draw some angles with that circle protractor in preparation for tomorrow, here's what I want you to do. I want you to complete the four practice problems. In the practice problems, there's already a protractor and it's all lined up for you. You just practice reading the numbers of the angles and figuring out the degrees. So step one, you want to write down what type of angle it is. And step two, you want to read the degrees on it and bring that to class with you tomorrow, and we'll use that to help us with our circle protractors. Have a nice night, boys and girls. I'll see you all tomorrow.